Hello, my name is Ross Wilkie. I'm the lead for the public health degree at Keele University. And what I'm going to do in this presentation is just talk through what public health is, uh, what the course entails, and what the entry requirements would be, along with the career opportunities once the, that you've completed the degree. So this degree will appeal to a large number of people. Um, apart from the, the recent interest, obviously, in, in public health linked to the COVID-19 pandemic, I think public health will uh, be of increasing interest over the next few years as healthcare changes, as the environment has increasing impact on population health. And we need to change how we can prevent people from becoming healthy over the next few years or so. Um, the degree isn't, a, it's not just a degree for people who are really interested in science, it's also appealing to people who might be coming from a social science background, so say if you've got an interest in politics or, or sociology or, or organisation of, of society. And it might also be of interest to people who are interested in art and, and then are able to communicate well, as public health is quite a broad subject. So what we're going to try and do in this presentation is kind of outline the breadth of it and what might be particularly appealing to me to you. I think that this the degree will appeal to people who essentially want to work to improve the health and the quality of life and the well-being of populations to try and make things better for populations to try and reduce inequality. If you do have an interest in communicable diseases like COVID-19 or measles, this might be a, a, an interesting degree to you. If you're interested in the impact of politics and, and policy, again, this might be a, an interesting degree for you. Um, so there are lots of different avenues that can set you up into a career that you would want to do for, for the rest of your life or to indeed develop further. And we'll, as I say, we'll talk a little bit about that. I do encourage you, my email address is at the bottom of this slide. If there are any questions at all, please email me. I'd be happy to have a discussion with you either by email or either by a, a video call. Um, and we can discuss the, whether this degree is what you would be looking to do. So just to start off with, this is the entry requirements for the degree. Um, from an international perspective, we're looking at 24 points in an international baccalaureate. Anything around the equivalent of three passes, essentially, at A level. Um, but with the foundation programmes, I'd be happy to talk about what it is you've achieved. Uh, because more importantly for me, I think it's about wanting to do the degree and wanting to study public health and what you might do after it. So if you're able to sh demonstrate that you're able to, to write reasonably well and you've got a a sort of basic knowledge of, of sort of maths and arithmetic. That's a key platform for us then to build your study skills on. So the course is essentially about epidemics. Um, these are four epidemics. Indeed, three of them are probably pandemics. Um, I'll give you a couple of minutes just to guess perhaps what you think each of these pandemics might be. The top left, as you're looking at the screen, is one you've probably seen a lot of, and this is COVID-19. So this is a, a communicable disease, um, really, really obviously of, of major importance because of the impact, the huge impact it's got on, on population health as well as society. And what we would do within our program is develop some of your understanding of how communicable diseases occur, how they spread, and how they can be managed and talk a little bit more about that further down the line. The top right is measles and I highlight this really because we were managing measles particularly well in the UK and we were beginning to lose the herd immunity against it. Measles is highly infectious uh, and we need to look at ways that we can try and improve population health linked to measles over the next few years. The bottom two uh, pictures relate to non-communicable disease, sorry. So on, on the bottom left is dead heart tissue, essentially. And this is the, the outcome of cardiovascular disease, or heart disease. And essentially, heart disease is caused by clots, or pro which then leads to problems with your heart function, which then goes on to lead to some death of the heart tissue. But a lot of the factors that cause this can be prevented. And this is, if you think heart disease is possibly these 
first or second most common health conditions in, in, in many countries, but it can be prevented in public health if we're trying to prevent that from heart disease occurring, as well as other diseases like cancer. I mean, we can prevent cancer, we could prevent uh, large, large numbers of people from getting diabetes. There are so many health conditions that have a huge impact that this degree is about understanding how they occur and how we can prevent them. And on the right hand side is arthritis, a particular interest of mine, it's a particular interest of the school that you're coming to, but again, arthritis can be prevented. And again, as I say, this course is about understanding how we can prevent these things from happening. So ultimately what we would want you to do is to develop a population-wide approach. And by that, we mean that the focus is on the community and the population rather than the individual patients that you might see, say, if you were to practice uh, as a doctor or a physiotherapist or as a nurse. But ideally what we need to be doing is instead of focusing on individuals who are at high risk or, or who have been high risk and are now in, in um, health care, what we want to do is focus on essentially everyone. We want to focus on people who are healthy to stop them becoming unhealthy. And we also want to focus on people who are unhealthy and try and get them to become healthy again. And there's lots of different ways that we can do that, depending on the disease state that people are in. But importantly, it's about understanding the risk factors and it's the importance of some of the science behind public health that builds your knowledge of that. So if we organise public health and we say, well, what is it? Well, there are essentially four key areas of public health. Health protection is about infectious disease, and this is the non-chemical diseases that we have just talked about in terms of COVID-19 infection. Uh, measles is an infectious disease, but there are other key ones that we might see more of in years to come, such as malaria um, and, and potentially some other diseases that we tend to see more so uh, in uh, much, much warmer climates, but that's a sign that the environment's changing. But what we would do within the programme is look to see how you can identify how these chemical disease um, spread and also how they can be managed. Health improvement is essentially about health promotion and this is about managing um, non-chemical diseases, so cancer, cardiovascular disease. And this is about understanding the behavioural factors and lifestyle factors, how that might link with the wider determinants of health. So poverty might be something that you have a particular interest in, in the role of poverty in some of these diseases. But ultimately, it's about understanding how they occur and trying to work out ways how we can stop them from occurring. We also, the third thing is about our improvement in health services. What we understand at a population level is driving the improvement in health services. But what underpins all that is epidemiology. And this is the key science to public health. And epidemiology is about understanding how common conditions occur, what the risk factors might be, and what the interventions are that lead to that particular risk factor being reduced or, and other health conditions being reduced in terms of when they occur and their impact. So this is basically the, the model of population or public health, and these are the four key areas that you would study around within the degree. It's always worth just highlighting again, as I've said, in terms of the, the subjects that you, you may have studied, um, this is the definition of what public health is. This is from the Faculty of Public Health, and it's essentially highlighting that public health is a science and an art. The science is the epidemiology, how we understand things happen, and the art is how we improve health at a population level. And it is a challenge because if we take obesity as an example, we know that obesity is linked to poor health, but we still find it challenging to stop people becoming obese and we find it really hard to reduce levels of obesity within the population. So that's the art, that's the challenge when it comes to non-communicable disease. But ultimately it is about applying the epidemiology and trying to understand these conditions and how we can then change their, how they occur. So the course is linked to the UK Public Health Registrar Framework. And the reason for that is we, what we want is for people who complete this degree to have the potential to go straight into a job at the end of the degree. Whether that be in the UK, because this framework 
uh, can be uh, translated into other international frameworks. But essentially, it's very important for us that if people want to start working immediately, that this degree provides them with the skills to do that. And these are potential opportunities that can occur after the degree. It's possible that you could work as a public health practitioner, this could be for a local council or a local organisation, focusing on how to improve population health. It's possible if you want to leave the UK, you could work in other, uh, you could work as a public health practitioner in other countries. We're only and we're highlighting here it's possible that you could also work for a non-government organisation or an international organisation and there, there may be links to organisations linked to the WHO. There's also potential to build your academic career up and the degree would allow you to then begin a master's programme, whether it be the master's in public health or another master's, this essentially would provide the degree level platform for you to go on and do that and we can provide support for that. It also would allow you to join the public health training programme and this is about becoming a public health registrar or a leader in public health but this degree again would be a platform for you to do that but it also provides a basis for other health foundations so if you did decide after all you wanted to become a, clinic, a clinician this degree would essentially help you to do that. So I thought it was worth just working through a couple of examples and looking at some of the content that's in the course. If we start off with health protection, this is a particular case that we might look at. And what we would like you to do is to begin to work out what actually is happening in this scenario. How would you manage it from a public health perspective? So if we start off this, uh, on the 16th of January, there's a 40 year old and wife presents to primary care. So that can be to general practice or it could be to a and &E. Um, but essentially, this uh, lady is presenting with illness, fever, headache, joint muscle pain, sore throat, and intense weakness. And this then leads to diarrhea, vomiting, rash, and some bleeding, and some stomach pain. And then you can start to see that there's some kidney and liver function. The practitioners will essentially focus here on the individual what's causing this, uh, how can we treat it, how can we diagnose it, how can we treat it. But this lady dies on the 19th. And then, notably, one of her colleagues also dies in the 19th. So this suggests that there is some sort of communicable disease perhaps going on, but this may well be something that's highly infectious. So the wider population is at risk. And the key function here, in addition to managing the individual person in front of you, is actually to think about the rest of the population that are at risk. So this was actually one case within the Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone. And what had happened here is that this was a starting point to beginning to understand what the virus was. So we have one chain of events here. We use person, place, time to identify how this chain was happening. But ultimately, it was really important in working on how to manage and stop the spread of Ebola within that community. But within the course, what we'll look at really importantly when it comes to managing infectious disease is how the communicable diseases transmit. And we always we are aware that for Ebola, similar to COVID-19, that the primary host is possible or is probably bats. And how that then uh, can move from bats then into humans and the source and the the, uh, the the means of escape and the mode of transmission is really, really important because that's ultimately how we can go on to prevent infectious diseases from moving into humans and, and creating the, the large epidemics and pandemics that we're witnessing now. So the basis of health protection can be really, really basic. It can be simple as just wearing protective equipment and also trying to prevent direct contact. And that's again, essentially what happened in e with Ebola, but also is happening just now with COVID-19. But importantly, I think with COVID-19, what's gonna be really important in the next two to three years is that we will really begin to understand the, the way the pandemic has occurred and how we can manage it. And that's the really exciting thing about doing a course like public health is that you would be within the group that are looking, uh, or within a group of people with a particular interest in this, because essentially we, will, you would, we would want you to do is, is to lead the management of the, of the population against future infectious diseases should they happen. So we would talk through the process of how we manage outbreaks, epidemics, pandemics, uh, and what the process of that would be with experts in the field. And the course links up 
with experts in virology as well as communicable disease consultants who work for Public Health England. So it's also really important that what we'll cover is things around how we can prevent uh, communicable disease from occurring in the future. I highlight measles here because one of the key ways to reduce uh, the instance of measles is through um, vaccination. So we'll include some of the basics around vaccination within the course. But times have moved on and whilst communicable disease was a, a key challenge for health, probably going back a hundred years or so, the times have changed and now the focus is on non-communicable disease. We show this really through tuberculosis. If we go back to 1850, the number of deaths due to uh, tuberculosis was, was quite high, but it dropped down over about a hundred year period from 1850 to about 1950, 1960. Now these three arrows highlight three major, um, three major occurrences within the tuberculosis story. And when we move on to this, we can see that in 1870, we were found out what was causing tuberculosis, and this was the bacteria that was causing that. In 19, late 1940s, we um, discovered antibiotics and then started treating it with it. And then around 1960, the immunization program started and that helped to reduce the deaths from tuberculosis. However, the death rate was vastly reduced before we were able to treat it and before we were able to prevent it. And this occurred through good public health practice. It, it changed because basically of of good water supplies, able to reduce the risk, change in population density. It was beyond health care, and that's what public health is clearly about. It's about preventing people from needing health care through simple things, simple preventative measures linked to an understanding of how disease occurs. So the basis for health promotion is understanding how these things are occurring and then how we can prevent them. And we link this in with our overall public health strategy linked to PHE and trying to protect our population from environmental hazards, but improving health and well-being and reducing inequalities is really important to us. And these are some of the priorities that we'll get you to, to look at. Obesity, stopping people smoking, reducing alcohol and, and drug-related issues, uh, but targeting things like cardiovascular disease, and respiratory disease and cancer is really important for improving population health in whichever country you would like to work at because we know that these risk factors that cause these diseases can be prevented and that's really important because we, we can see that there's a lot of disease happening that doesn't really need to happen and it's crucial that public health is able to prevent this and that links us to models of health determinants. This is a Dahlgren and Whitehead model, which identifies the interaction between the individual and environmental factors. And I really like this Barton Grant model because I think as time goes on, we're going to have to look more and more at the environment as that drives poor health. And there are a lot of a lot of real health issues that that you're, you may well be unaware of it, are actually driven by changes within the environment. So we'll cover these aspects within the course. This is really highlighting the fact that deprivation is a crucial uh, risk factor for a number of diseases. Essentially, the, uh, with greater deprivation, the more likely you are to get health problems. But ultimately, it's not simply about the amount of money that people have, and there are lots of other factors in this graph here, which we'll talk about in more detail within the course. It really highlights that it's almost about structure and policy in community spirit that sometimes can be much, much more important than, than the amount of money that people have. So really being a public health practitioner is about how you can bring communities together and provide, put structures in place that can improve health and other measures of how well-being occurs and, and the quality of life of people that are there within populations. Ultimately, we want you to have a really fine look at the detail and the depth of the, of the information about local populations. And we'll talk through in this slide here is about Stoke-on-Trent, the local city to kill. But identifying the key challenges for public health is really important. So what we want in this degree is that you take on the challenge of targeting the population and trying to improve population health whether it be through health protection, where you're trying to reduce the impact of communicable diseases such as COVID-19, 
or measles or malaria, whether it's through health promotion. And what we're trying to do is reduce the impact of common conditions such as heart disease or cancer, and whether it's really about developing your ability to be a scientist, because that's essentially what being an epidemiologist is. And we have a pathway that can help you to develop that. So this course is based within School for Primary, Community and Social Care. We are a strong research unit with an international reputation looking at uh, conditions such as mental health, arthritis and other musculoskeletal conditions and cardiovascular health. This is just a couple of pictures of the building that we're in. This is on the Keel campus, our lecture theatre and, and the cafe, which is right behind the lecture theatre. And our ambition really is to produce public health practitioners who have a national and international reputation for being good at what they do. So ultimately, we would like you to train well in our program and then go and show and practice the public health practitioner elsewhere and improve the health of populations. So within the course, we follow those four key areas, health protection, health promotion, improving services and epidemiology. And each of these modules within year one, year two, and year three will cover those things. So academic and personal employment and ability is really just about getting you settled into the university. Introduction to health and wellbeing is broad across the four areas. The biology and environmental basis about health protection. Global health about developing your ability to look beyond. Uh, the UK and prospectus and health essentially is epidemiology. We build on these modules in year two, and I'll give you some time to look at that within the slides at a later date. Importantly, at QL, we allow students to pick elective modules, and this is really just to build up the learning that you would choose to do within a degree, but can essentially help you in your career development later on. There's also a work-based learning module in year two, which allows you to again look at how public health practices, practices locally between year two and three, we have an international year, so if your career aspiration is to work beyond the UK, this is the time when you can get some practical experience of doing that and we'll help to support that. And then in year three, we want to bring it all together so that by the time you finish your degree, you've got a pathway either to stay in academia or to go into practice. This is again just to highlight those postgraduate opportunities. The course, as I say, links up the UK Private Public Health Registry Framework. It links up with key functional uh, capabilities that you would like to develop. This is just an example of a job opportunity. I'll probably get about half a dozen job adverts sent to me every month. So there are jobs around the country for people with these degrees. And this is just again to highlight where this degree sits within the public health suite of courses. So you may well complete this degree, choose to go on and do a master's in public health, Perhaps if you've got a real interest in research is to go on and do the professional doctorate. But the, the, this bottom line he, here really is about going on and doing the public health training, which would allow you to develop as a registrar or a consultant in public health. So you would be leading the public health practice within uh, large areas uh, in, in countries that you choose to work in. So this is just to highlight the, the global health perspective. Population health is global health. And we link up with some of our students, there are broader student groups within the university that you could link up with to develop your experience and your career pathway linked to that. So that's just again a, a summary of the potential course. Again, this is a summary of the entry requirements, but I encourage you to contact me if you're interested in this, because we can talk about whether what you've got is appropriate for the degree and, and it would be useful to do that. So thank you very much for your time for, for listening to this presentation. Uh, so if you're interested in developing the health of populations, if you're interested in reducing the impact of conditions such as COVID-19 or heart disease or, or cardiovascular disease or reducing inequalities or improving health services, this could be a degree that would be of interest to you. And please contact me should you do so. So thank you.